Hello and welcome back to the Agassino Zynga show with me your host Agassino Zynga and this is episode number 431 that's 431 of the Agassino Zynga show how you doing how you feeling great amazing good to know if it's your first time checking the show via youtube you know what to do smash that like button hit subscribe and even comment down below that'll be more than welcomed if you're listening via the podcast app a five star review a download and a share will be greatly appreciated and if you want to support the podcast via patreon you can do that too via patreon.com for slash agostino that's patreon.com for slash a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o to get one bonus episode per month via patreon on the patreon subscriber page for a little as one dollar per month get involved get on there today patreon.com for just agostino for us a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o get in there right now don't delay today so how you been doing how are you guys fine good amazing chilling enjoying your week month days as they you know blend into one as per usual nothing much changes I, I bet you if i replay the intro of this podcast from like what september onwards they probably will sound the same in it maybe varying levels of my tonality but i'm pretty sure it has been the same old hamster wood nonsense um so what's been going on with the boy this weekend not much really he had a bit of running over the weekend that was pretty cool i managed to get outside it's been difficult to do that so far but I managed to get out and do some running. That was good. Get some fresh air in my lungs and struggled, you know, to complete um eight 200 meter repeats. But, you know, we move little by little. I'll be improving. Um, What else have I been doing? Watching a few movies. What the movie that I last which last watch? Oh, Tinker Taylor, Tinker Taylor Spy, right? Tinker Taylor Talker Spy, whatever that, what that book is. That movie is based on a book by John Lee Carr or something, right? I think he recently passed away um very famous uh spy novelist so that was pretty good watch um i finished watching the first half of night stalker of course on netflix i recommend you check that out if you're in tune or a big fan of um serial killer documentaries as much as i am and just you know thriller type stuff because it's very well put together it's very dramatic i still have to finish your honor i've got that saved on my um computer that i'm a bit about to watch hopefully yeah, it'll be, yeah i should be able to watch this this weekend should be able to complete that because i think the last episode should be this week too in it right i think it's 10 episodes series but that's been about it what else um i recently bought a book yeah this is courtesy of um what podcast um this is courtesy of a podcast called how i made my first million and they recommend this um how to be rich the distilled wisdom of one of britain's wealthiest self-made entrepreneurs uh author felix dennis this is book here it's a bit of a naff title i think it's they related it similar to like the four hour work week the title is a bit wanky but the actual context of the book is a lot better than the title um and it follows this sort of like you know outlandish you know um wealthy millionaire dude from the uk who basically has some very you know contra controversial and also simple advice as to how you can live a quote-unquote rich life so i'm gonna obviously check that out because why not if there is ever a better time to learn how to get your money up this will be it, in it this would be it and um that's been about it really for the most part man it's just been that and oh yeah again football football's always saving a day watch a bit of ufc over the weekend sort of room loose to volkov um so Frank Edgar, Frank Edgar get kneed in the face. Um, and that's about it, really, isn't it? Not, not much more to add, really, apart from that. Um, again, football's been the best thing. Um, so what happened? Yeah. So this is, you're watching this, what, the day after? United won 1-0 at home against West Ham in the FA Cup. Um, a pretty decent result, all things considered. Um, but actually watching it, it was quite possibly one of the worst games of football I've ever watched, I think um there might be a lot to say there could be an excuse ready made one in terms of it being locked down right and there's just no fans in the stadium and it takes something away from the games i'm pretty sure a lot of these players after this whole period has kind of you know um come to a close and they can have some space from it i'm sure a lot of players will be saying it maybe you know through um unverified sources or via leaks that they didn't enjoy playing in empty stadiums one bit one bit whatsoever and that it actually greatly affected their level of performance i'm pretty sure they'll say that now maybe the teams at the very top probably don't have that excuse because you're always fighting for honors so it's for fans are no fans you're always competing for something essentially your career 
and your bonuses and all that stuff are very much dependent on how you play right so if we don't finish the top four certain bonuses don't get triggered um certain contracts don't get triggered um whatever it may be right the club doesn't end up getting a lot more money to you know build on the squad loads of things are kind of on the line when it comes to those sort of you know finishing places but maybe if you're outside the top six it probably doesn't matter but i'm pretty sure it's definitely affecting the quality of the games i, I would assume they put that aside just watching united play Manchester united and my team it's just a very un it's just a especially now we're over that sort of like you know Bruno bump in the court of, in an account attacking football that was kind of blitzing everybody out of the way all our individual players sort of playing on 10 now that we've kind of gone back to our i'd say medium level in terms of how we're performing and we're just having a you know a few of our better players are having a lot of off days all at once which you know you could possibly point direct at the manager if loads of players are all playing badly all at once it's definitely something wrong with maybe the organization and how we do what we're doing in training but there's just something about watching us it just saps all the joy at our football i don't know what it is we just play so slow um side to side like even today i guess west ham right like or west ham obviously didn't care what didn't come to you know really cause us any problems they played about an actual striker up front they played yarmolenko who is a left winger up front and um, i guess they played him up there because he was the, probably the biggest of the attackers that they had um ben rama started on the bench uh Mikel antonio obviously is out injured um lingard obviously couldn't play because he's cup tied and on loan so they didn't really have that many options but still Dave Moyes didn't really set them up to come and you know attack Manchester United at home don't get me wrong away from home for them but we didn't really as per shown in other games we don't really have seem to have an answer for teams that defend with 10 or 11 men behind the ball we don't know what to do and again it's probably more difficult obviously I would imagine to play against a team that just doesn't want to cross the halfway line than it is to play against a team that's willing to kind of commit men forward because they leave gaps at the back I get that but unfortunately when you're a team of main United size you're more likely more often gonna face teams who are not gonna want to you know take you on you know um tit for tat uh, goal for goal pass for pass they're gonna want to pick you out your mistakes and counter-attack it and then when they get a goal you know step back and defend deep and then kind of hit you again on the break that's what they're going to want to do so we have to find a way to break these teams down and at the moment we just don't seem to have a way to do it like we just we pass the ball sideways we might cross it eventually then it comes back into the middle there's no real like patterns like most top teams have a pattern they have like a you know liverpool city in a the league they scored basically the same goals week in week out even spurs with with harry kane and, and son they score a variation of the same goal you even see it with aston villa for goodness sake even play better football than us it's just really terrible to watch and there's just so many issues that are at place there again we won the game right we won eventually don't get me wrong but there's just so many issues first the team was fairly decent i think you know if if it was if if maybe by was fit you might want to rest one of the center backs i think the team was fairly non-offensive i didn't have you have an issue with that um i thought teles played pretty well he probably maybe the best i think performer overall he was probably unlucky to get man in the match because he went off about the 70th minute for luke shaw which again i didn't understand when bissaka came off because he eventually he was uh, injured i think for uh, brandon williams was a bit of a concern because brandon williams is a big drop off from anwan bissaka in my opinion but hey what can you do um fred and matish played fairly decent i didn't think matish really deserved to get taken off but it is what it is Van der Beek eventually came off because he had a pretty quiet game and was quietly affected but didn't really influence the game as much as he probably needed to. And Bruno was always going to come on even if we were winning 9-0. Sosha was going to find a way to bring Bruno on. Mason Greenwood I thought played pretty alright and he was taken off first before Rashford who I didn't think had a good enough game even though he got the assist quote unquote. And Martial played like Martial plays and then like good hold up play but when it comes to actually you know stuff that he's doing inside the box in terms of you know scoring goals and doing what shy should do he's maybe coming up a bit short this season compared to what he did last season so it's just so many you know holes and people are form in a team overall that i'm sometimes looking at, i think what do we do in training i get there's not many days in between the games right we play on the weekday we usually play again on the, on the weekend so at most there's like five days i, I think at most Right, if you play on a Tuesday, you get Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, at most, at most, you get five days. So if that's the case, there's not a lot of games, days to do training. I get that, but you still have to make do with the best you have available. And I feel like at the moment, we just aren't doing that. And um, 
yeah, man, it's just a, a terrible game of football. I just don't know what to say. A very terrible game of football. Without McTominay's goal, I really don't see how he would have scored. Maybe Bruno Fernandes might have made something happen because he's just, you know, he just comes up clutch like that in most occasions. But even the McTominay thing, like, I'm not even a big fan of him as a player. I think, especially in defensive midfield, I don't think McTominay is a defensive midfielder. I think, you know, we've basically proved now. I think he's got, what, seven or eight goals already this season. He should be playing further forward. He's probably one of our better attacking midfielders just on statistics alone. If that's the case, play him further forward. Change the formation. Do something to include him into the, in, in a game because he's clearly very good at running late into the box, Lampard style, and finishing, right? With his head, with his feet. He's got a very clear, he's got a very clean and powerful strike on him. Everything's quite intentional. It's not like scuffed shots. He always kind of buries And I think that might have to do with the fact that I think he used to play up front when he was a kid. Um, then he used to play number 10 and then I guess because he lost maybe some of his agility and because he just maybe he had a growth spurt he just got bigger as he is now he's about what six foot three or something ripped to shit so maybe that's why um, the the people the coaches at the club probably thought hey instead of letting him go we should convert him into a DM because he's got the size but he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't have the spatial awareness the depth of passing the interception ability to read the game he doesn't really have it to be a defensive midfielder but he does have the ability to be maybe a box box midfielder because he's really fit or just be an attacking midfielder point blank play him there but we don't really do that either um van der beek comes in from the cold and he looks a bit lost and he's making runs and no one's fi trying to find him for because he hasn't got the rhythm he's not on the, the pace of his fellow teammates and maybe in the back of his head, he's just knowing that no matter how well he plays, he's always going to get subbed off for Bruno Fernandes anyway, which ended up happening. So it's just an, a really odd mishmash of a team. And then you have Alex Telles playing who crosses the ball a lot, but we don't score a lot of headers. And the only player we've got up front who can score the tennis is Cavani. But then he's not really been pulling up the trees either. So even if you're not a fan of Marshall, you put Cavani in and he's not the best starting, I think. I think he's probably better coming off for the bench it's just um it's just an odd team it's just a very odd team and then you look at our coaching staff it's just like i don't know what these guys are doing man i really don't know what's going on with the team overall again um i'm still a firm believer that i don't think we're gonna ever win anything under Ole Gunnar social i just don't think it's gonna happen it's just the football's just too bad at the moment um we don't really have solutions um there's no real dynamism in what we do i don't really see a pattern of play a style of play even style of play you can maybe not say that's true because we don't have that kind of counter-attacking thing we hit, we have in our back pocket but it's very painful watching us play football i have to admit it's very painful watching us play football i have to really admit that it really is painful um you know the whole am i diallo thing he was included in the match day squad they tried to hype that up as if it was something and again it's just so bizarre how easily united fans are distracted from the bigger picture the kid's 18 he was playing Atalanta. He wasn't even starting games for them in a Serie A, which is some people would argue is that maybe the third best league in the world, maybe fourth. He wasn't starting for Atalanta. And then he, he was signed for close to 40 million, depending on if he makes his appearances and whatnot. Um, and people are expecting him to come straight into the first team. He doesn't. He goes and plays in the under 23s. Doesn't look that frighteningly. You know, you expect a player of his ilk. If he was that good, he'd look like Ansu Fati good. He doesn't look that good. Um, that's not his fault. He maybe could turn into a good player later, but it's just the level of hype and expectation that's been placed upon him. It's just like, this isn't going to help the kid. You know what I mean? He's 18. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know. The, that was maybe the most worrying part of it. But, you know, I guess we move with that regard. But, yeah, I guess we're through now. Six round of the FA Cup. It's probably our best chance to win a. Uh, a trophy I think this season depending especially when you consider what's going on I think Europa League's a long and treacherous competition which personally I don't want anything to do with I'd much rather us try and finish as high as we can in the league and completely sack off the Europa League and just play our kids and try and win a domestic trophy like the FA Cup which we haven't won in a while um, then try and win the Europa League it's just not on so I think FA Cup is most likely our best route to some kind of silverware and then for my opinion Solskjaer needs a silverware this is going to be three years of our trophy at United he needs silverware I think finishing <coughs> especially if we end up finishing you know at, you know up outside the top two or whatever do you know what I mean silverware is going to be very very important to justify or to kind of maybe justify yeah to maybe justify the fact that we got knocked out in the Champions League even though we had three games left to basically make up a point 
Um, he's definitely going to need a trophy. Moving on, what else do we have here? Um, oh, yeah, we have this in it. This is a hilarious story. So this is courtesy of Get French Football News. I'm sure most of you or some people might be aware that William Saliba, um, this young centre-back that was signed for Arsenal, hasn't necessarily played any games, but um, he sort of got iced out by Mikel Arteta, Arsenal's manager, and basically got sent back out on loan, even though he hadn't played a senior game. And there was rumours behind the scenes of what happened, whether it was a family bereavement, his head wasn't right, but just something just seemed odd. Why Arsenal would spend that much money on the youngster? I think it might have been 30 million or something euros or something along those kind of lines, right? It was a lot of money. <coughs> <coughs> And so far he hasn't played he doesn't look like he's going to play and nothing's really happened with that but since that he's been you know quite mouthy he's been speaking a lot to the press about his treatment at arsenal and basically you know he's been pretty fair to be to be honest he has basically said you know think he's having things happen in football he would have liked to be given a chance but i think they had other other plans in mind he's just going to put his head down and keep working you did you know it's maybe a bit much for a player who hasn't really done much in the game but you know you get you like the, his actual um you like how confident he is in his ability and how willing he is to speak about his experience as a player. Most players kind of, you know, avoid these things and sort of hide. But then over the weekend, a mad video came out about William Saliba, a video that I'm, I really find hard to describe apart from bashing, right? And it's just an odd, odd video. Um, because I guess, what? Well, how old is this guy? He might be at, what, 22 or something like that, right? 22, 21? maybe around that age 21 24 and i'm just struggling to understand what um what kind of humor footballers get up to at that age in this generation like because you know i'll describe the video too but essentially um william saliba's in a in a room somewhere on the on a little sofa sat next to one of his friends who's by the looks of it fully naked um you know pleasing himself watching something on his smartphone with another friend next to that friend sitting there as well watching his smartphone it's the most bizarre scenario i've ever seen like these three guys or five guys in the dressing room one person's you know beating his meat and the other people are just like sitting around the room acting as if what's happening isn't happening and william sleeper is obviously recording a video of what's occurring on his snapchat and it's just so utterly confusing i just don't understand <clears throat> i get there's guys out there i like to run trains on girls which is again it's another thing of my part of my life and history that i'm happy i didn't take part in maybe i'm you know too old for that or maybe just didn't have a, a scenario that it ever <coughs> jesus christ let me get some water there <coughs> okay there we go <laughs> jesus <laughs> maybe i'm just lucky that that scenario never really occurred for me right i never really had um, a scenario where i was in a room with one female and you know 17 other of my guy friends and she happened to be like oh my god this is the one thing that turns me on let's go let's go get get after it that never really occurred so i was pretty lucky in that regard but i know for some guys it's a thing right they want to be in the rooms with other dudes you know going at it maybe i don't think it's that calculated it might just be the fact that you know most of the time um these guys they find it easier to get their rocks off in a group setting than they maybe do on their own because they can just take advantage and you know sort of uh without yeah take advantage of the situation and slip in right no pun intended but the pleasing of oneself in a group with your friends is bizarre that's the one thing that i would imagine of the two things that you wouldn't mind your friends seeing you doing i'd imagine pleasing yourself might be the number one over you know intercourse with a with a with a lady of the night or something right i'd imagine it's i would imagine it's still awkward to see a friend in a sexual manner yeah like fully right it's it's always odd seeing your friend kissing their girlfriend or whatever right so it's a bit cringy but i'd imagine you'd be okay <laughs> with maybe seeing them into do intercourse more so than you would do please themselves because i guess everyone must have their own way of doing it and you don't really know what your way and you, your way is weird until you see someone else's way is weird it's just like I don't, again i just don't know there's no real words to put next to this to make it make sense why is a at that time they were what they must have been at the time of the video recording i'm gonna say they were under 19 or something right so it's not young enough that you just don't know jack shit it's young enough that you know that's weird right so it's just 
and even if it wasn't like imagine if someone says oh no it was actually they all you know let's say not putting names on anybody but let's just imagine that scenario someone can say no they're actually you know all homosexuals cool no problem but still why is there only one guy naked that's so odd right you would imagine if you were in some sort of like shared sexual experience that at least two of you would have one article of clothing off at least it wouldn't just be one guy it would be at least other people that would kind of get into it. even just taking a few socks it was just like such an odd video but again maybe that's just something that guys are doing nowadays especially younger kids that we just have no idea about <laughs> they're booking hot it's like they're booking hotel rooms you know smoking shisha vibing out with some music on a beats pill bluetooth speaker and then someone just stuck naked on a on a sofa in the corner whacking stuff so whacking off not even in the corner in the middle of the sofa he actually was sitting i'm pretty sure the kid wasn't even on the edge like to one side like you know in shame sort of like protecting himself hunched over no he was actually in the middle of the sofa with his legs sort of crossed <laughs> and they'd be watching something on the tv it was utterly uh, legitimately what might have been one of the most insane things i've ever seen on the internet like legitimately especially involving a young player because usually you see them doing some really sus stuff like i think there's a troy parrot video came out he's a youngster played for tottenham um there's a video of mason greenwood from ages ago where he's sort of like twerking on his friend in the coach coaching room in the changing room there's some weird videos out there but you can kind of get those right boys like to do some especially in football there is a bit of odd homoerotic banter that goes on right that's a little bit you're trying to be edgy i guess in some respects or maybe trying to just act out without anybody accusing you or something i don't know what it is but there's always that weird banter i think in every american sports they have it right where they pull down your shorts and shit but this is like another level like this is odd i know there's some i know even some rugby teams there'll be guys that would die sword that was sword fight right with their flipping pieces in the shower and shit I've, i know that stuff happens but and uh, you know of course the uh, you know um slapping of your ball sack if you're running around like whatever there's some weird stuff that goes on change room but sitting in a it looks like a hotel room or some sort and then you being on snapchat video recording yourself and selfie and having your friend next to you fully naked it looks like by the looks of it whacking off and you smiling to the camera is just bizarre i don't really know like what was that a prank was that a dare um I don't know like i just don't know how to explain it i really don't know how to explain it i really really don't know but again it's another example of like you know the need for these kids nowadays to be on social media at all times it's as if if they're not on social it didn't happen you know you probably wouldn't want anyone to know that happened right in regular lives but still like what an utterly bizarre situation again um check it out for yourself i think you'll be able to find it maybe on twitter that's why i saw it last um william saliba video <laughs> just type that into your search bar and then you know thank me like <laughs> thank me like <laughs> oh mate i don't know man i don't know um what else we got let's move on from that a bit yeah let's move on oh yeah have you guys seen this i'm not going to play the video because it's dark as hell but this is a post from um the new york post it says the following a photo reveals a couple slaughtered over a snow shoveling dispute and if you're not familiar i've wa i watched it early in the week but i had to re-watch it again thanks to tim dylan's podcast which i recommend you check out it's on patreon he's got bonus shows on there <clears throat> they're really really good <clears throat> And essentially what it is, is a video um, camera. It's a video camera footage taken outside someone's home where two neighbors, and what you see is a scene uh, develop over like two minutes and a half, I think. Yeah, the four videos are two minutes and a half where two neighbors start arguing about um, the other neighbor, I guess, shoveling snow onto their driveway. I assume that's the problem. I assume that's a big deal in like, you know, places where it snows a lot, maybe in rural places in America, you sort of like make sure you shovel your driveway because, you know, there's no council or local departments going to come through and shovel it. So you're always cool shoveling your driveway and keeping it clean, um, keeping it clear so you can drive your car up and down, blah, blah, blah. So I'm assuming this is just a standard thing that people do, but it's also maybe a point of arguments to be had for some neighbors, you know, because, you know, your roads are so close to each other, your spots are close, sometimes some snow could get um moved over the other side maybe unintentionally and intentionally regardless they get into an argument 
within the argument um there's a couple and then one dude um the, the couple i think the guy comes out first he argues with the guy quite intensely then the woman comes out who's shoveling behind the a guy to kind of back him up then the guy on his own starts to he's i don't think he's, he's in camera yet then he comes out they start pointing fingers and then all of a sudden it escalates to a point where the guy that was on his own ends up shooting both the guy he was arguing and his wife um then goes uh back indoors which where i stopped the video my, my first thought i thought that's where the video ends because he basically shoots them you know point blank and they're effectively dead and i was like god damn it right that's about it but it's actually when i then listen to a tim dylan video he says that there's a second bit where he goes back into the into the home and he gets another gun an ar-15 and then he takes he goes back and shoots them a second time just to make sure and then i guess when he goes back inside his home the final time the police get called they're surrounding his home and then he decides to take his own life but it's a legitimately right one of the most um i think tim didn't describe it the same way it might be the most disturbing things i've seen on the internet for a long time and again and i was the kind of person that was addicted to watch people die subreddit right when it was still around it's been you know it's been deleted uh since then it's been banned from the web so i'm sure there's another one that exists but it exists on like an alternative reddit i forgot what it's called but it doesn't get updated as much but when watch people die was around and now there's another subreddit called um dead or vegetable right that's similar sort of elk but i used to be an addict of watching people die addict of it i used to, i don't know what about it i like watching it but there's something there's something quite uh thrilling about watching um something so macabre like that happening in just real time in just a, the most mundane fashion because that's the thing you start to realize a lot especially when you watch a lot of fight videos fight porn street fights right you start to realize that actual fights actual combat in real life is a lot more it's, it's probably less spectacular less of a spectacle than what it seems like in movies and shit right it's either someone one person does the fight the other person doesn't so it's really one-sided or two people don't know what they're doing and it's just a diabolical thing to watch but it's just something i don't know it's something in it I like i'm drawn to it i can't explain it don't ask me why but i used to be obsessed with that subreddit watch people die right and then this video really shook me to my core because of the the banality of it right it's just a really what what from what we can see a sleepy town somewhere um with not many people around you know limited amount of neighbors maybe limited amount of you know places to go just a really quiet small town somewhere people just chilling enjoying their <laughs> enjoying their time doing whatever they're doing and then suddenly in the space of two minutes whole families lives are changed completely on, t on a turn of a dime and mostly because one neighbor decided that they would go out of their way to insult the other and then the other person didn't they, 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 had, they had no idea what that person was capable of and i think this is a very good lesson for most people to learn about the benefit and the beauty in you know, the benefit it's a lesson to be learned um around the whole adage that people have like you never know who you're messing with right like keep mind your business sort of thing um because who knows what drove this guy to snap who knows what got him to the point where he decided to you know um commit double homicide right in broad daylight and then end his own life because he was pissed off that somebody kept shoveling snow into his driveway that's not reason enough to kill anybody right but the issue is which is something the reason why i have a lot of the issue with people that exist on social media especially on twitter who kind of have this weird idea that the world needs to conform to how they view things is that the world is unfortunately the way it is as is and it probably will continue to be for until the end of time so you have to learn how to navigate in it as it is at the moment and at the moment there are complete psychos out there who will legitimately kill you at the turn of a dime because something just snapped in them so you it probably serves you best to maybe just keep your counsel mind your business and keep it moving because you really never know who you may cross paths with and this dude was legitimately one of those people um so this is article for new york post says the photo reveals a couple slaughtered over the snow dispute it says images have emerged of the pennsylvania couple of so pennsylvania um that was um heartlessly murdered by the neighbor during a snow shovel dispute james goy 50 and his wife lisa goy 48 were slain by their neighbor outside the sacrum um on monday in a final altercation that was caught on camera james and lisa are shown in the back row of the facebook picture flanking their surviving fifth-year-old son who has autism 
Um, a highly disturbing clip of the incident shows Jeffrey Allen Spade, um, 47, going into his house to get a gun, shoot James and Lisa dead, following an argument that shoveling snow into the other person's uh, property. Um, it says here, quote, if you step out there, I'll knock your ass out. James can be heard saying to Spade, I'll make your life a living hell here. Dickhead, James can be heard saying to Spade and responds, what the fuck? Fuck you, fuck you, scum. And you've got obviously the two victims of the, and the injury. And the, the frightening thing about it is that the woman actually keeps talking smack to the guy, even with like bullet wounds riddled all over her body the first time that's the absolute madness of it like she's so hell-bent on making sure that he knows that she's not fond of the guy that she's still talking shit to him even when she's like at the de at death's door basically and then of course he comes back the second time with ar-15 and just completely smokes her um and the guy indoors as well but it's just uh it's a tragic tragic video tragic 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 video tragic altercation but again another indication um that you should just maybe just mind your business like getting involved in every people's everyone's drama and you know calling people certain names triggering them and just doing things just to get a reaction it's just like i don't know sometimes you don't know who you're messing with man you don't know who you're messing with that's just i don't know i saw that video and i was like it proper took me aback honestly and again like i said i watch a lot of i watch a lot of weird shit and that really took me for one. I was like, oh, okay, this is weird. This is another level. What can you do? What can you do? Moving on. We have this interesting and interesting, interesting, interesting. <laughs> this is one of the most hilarious stories I've seen on social in maybe a minute. So this is courtesy of the TMZ. It says, Gorilla Girl hairdo. I still can't get this glue out after ER might be time to sue. So if you're not familiar, over the last what week or so, this viral video went across, um, was spread of, obviously on social media of this uh, black girl who mistakenly had applied Gorilla Glue to her hair in order to slick it back in this sort of like ponytail style. Um, I'm not sure if she accidentally saw it on her counter and thought it was whatever shampoo she used or she bought it in the shop thinking it was another brand and then brought it back and whatever something happened that she decided she wrongfully applied Gorilla Glue which is meant to be one of the most strongest glues sort of like a pv a clear i'm not saying pvc whatever the clear type of glue that you call it right you rub on your hands you rub and you can put two random things together right similar to super glue and she put that in her hair and of course now she can't you know get her hair free from then on but in such odd turn of events it went into everyone kind of feeling really sorry for the girl i'm sending her sympathy you know out there and then she went up and set up a GoFundMe, which, you know, is a little bit exploitive, but it makes some sort of sense, you know, regarding uh, the public, the outpouring of public support that existed on there. And then she went to a doctor. She kind of got, uh, you know, she kind of got a consultation and, and we saw that happening. And she went back home and you saw her trying to apply whatever treatment was giving her in order to get the thing off. And it just seemed like there was some sort of resolution being heard. But, you know, by the end, that was what we kind of got to. But then now we're at a point where, a young lady who made such a mistake that she made herself right no one told her to put in this hair this good no one's ever suggested you should apply gorilla glue to your hair in any way shape or form she's now got to a point where she's deciding to sue the company that makes the glue because of what because guess what on the bottle the company made a grave mistake of not um correctly or clearly putting on the bottle that it says it's non-suitable for hair because who would think about putting a super glue in the hair in the first place? Um, so now, you know, as as um, idiotic as they may seem, she might legitimately have a case. She might be able to get some money off this because this kind of reminds me a little bit of that story from ages ago relating to the McDonald's coffee cup, right? Of that young, of that, I think it was an elderly lady who put the coffee cup between her legs as she was driving away. Um, it poured out and spilled and gave her third degree burns or something right and i think that might have to do something with the lid or the cup or something that they had to change but then of course in the in the court they end up settling and paying her you know millions many many millions so that was basically what set for that precedent of maybe putting on lids or 
holders or the cup design something or maybe the temperature of the coffee itself regardless of what it was there was a little window in there even though the old lady shouldn't have been putting a a mug of coffee you just purchased from a shop in between your legs as you're driving away still don't get me wrong it still may be majority her fault the fact that it led to third degree burns is probably a bit excessive and um i guess the fact that this bottle doesn't specifically specify you should put in your hair she might get some room for it but there's a part of me that thinks come on man and now she's got verified on, on instagram it's like this is absolutely insane let's read the story here um let's actually read the, the actual original bit and we can go back up here it says uh the tiktoker who put gorilla grew in her hair still is having is, is still living in her grandmother's her sorry her nightmarish mistake uh the glue brands remedies aren't working and now she's lowering up sources familiar with the situations tell tmz tissues um brown's weekend trip to the er uh, was an, another disaster and a girl who tip to use rubbing alcohol to remove the product was a colossal failure on our sources say uh, tisha spent 22 hours in er and the staff were dumbfounded we we're told healthcare workers put acetone on the back of her head but it burned her scalp and only made the glue gooier before hardening back up oh my god what a nightmare that must hurt so badly to put acetone on your hair with super glue on it holy shit tisha um we're told was instructed to keep her uh trying to potential remedy back home but rubbing alcohol doesn't prove the cure now is she only doing this because she wants to keep her hair because the logical thing or to do would be just to shave it all off right but i guess maybe shaving it would hurt right but it would it hurt as much as just trying to because it looks it seems like she's trying to save her actual hair follicles on her head but she has to come to the conclusion that that time now is gone your hair is finished it might grow back in in a period of time you know unfortunately for black people hair this length does take a long time to grow depending on you know um your genes of course but usually it's not gonna you know she's not gonna get her hair back how it was prior in a year or whatever but there is an option just to kind of shave it off you just shave it off standard and keep it moving but i assume it's probably a lot more difficult than it seems it says here um tisha we're told was instructed to keep trying the the that's her keep trying uh remember tisha said that says her hair has been rock solid for about a month after substituting gorilla Gru's adhesive spray for her normal hairspray oh my god so she obviously had it on her shelf she made the mistake herself um, Gigi told us the quickest possible remedy is rubbing alcohol our sources say um tisha's hair tisha tied an attorney and is weighing up illegal options against gorilla glue and um, we're told the label on the product she used to do not use uh, on says oh it says do not use on eyes skin or clothing with no mention of hair which tisha is misleading come on <laughs> she made the mistake she grabbed the wrong bottle and sprayed it on her head and then she went and looked at the bottle Ugh. but look at that man that is insane Gigi says all the products are considered permanent and the packaging state so uh but we're told tisha felt it was okay because the product said more to use oh my god so what's the thinking and the actual logical thinking is that somehow super glue or setting glue or whatever it may be if you get a tiny bit of it on your hair it makes it shiny i guess is that the point of it it doesn't make any sense to me personally it sounds like a very high risk low reward game to play personally god damn it it's already car funded for a crowd bills or go find me she raised nine thousand and counting which is fair to go off in it because you know again um it's america there is no uh, free health service um no there's no free health care and i'm assuming the the cost of getting this treatment hospital is going to be astronomical especially because it's something that no one's ever seen um but god damn it imagine raising nine grand for a mistake that you made yourself and then going to sue the company because they didn't clearly label the the, the product don't put in your hair what next don't ingest let's continue what's the update here it says gorilla glue um says tisha saga is a unique situation here this is their quote from gorilla glue company themselves they quoted uh the following on on um, twitter this is their statement it says we're aware of the situation and we are very sorry to hear about the unfortunate incident that miss brown experienced using our sprayed his stuff on her hair this is a unique situation because the product is not indicated for use in or in or on hair as it is a considered permanent 
Our spray adhesive states in the warning label, do not swallow, do not get in eyes, skin or clothing. It is used on craft home and auto office supplies, mount things to surfaces such as paper, cardboard, wood, laminate and fabric. We are glad to see in her recent video that Miss Brown has received medical treatment for med local medical facilities. I wish her the best. Of course, you know, that isn't enough nowadays. You have to do everything you can to squeeze and shame these companies into bending to your very needs. And this is what she's going to end up doing. But God damn, the company says it's sorry. Duh, duh, duh. But God damn, what situation? I think the last I saw online, I think she actually did start cutting her hair. I think someone cut off her ponytail. So I think maybe acetone or something worked. I don't know what ended up working. But what a tragic situation, isn't it? Like, of all the times to be in this sort of predicament, it's during the lockdowns, maybe the worst and maybe the best. Because people, I think people's um, capacity for empathy is maybe heightened more that we're going through this tragic situation right with um obviously this virus that we're all living under um so people are more willing to be a little bit more sympathetic to people's plights regardless of what they are but this is self-inflicted in it right we should really really be going out of our way to you know save this girl from the situation like she kind of got herself into us you know she should kind of get herself out of it this is like a um but it's such an american thing this isn't it right you you some you, uh, you make a mistake but you get other people to pay for it right essentially this is a very american thing to do and again maybe some good will come out of it maybe it will lead to this what, what what's it gonna lead to where they're gonna start changing their label to specifically say don't put in your hair when no one in the history of gorilla glue has ever put uh, applied in their hair as sex right like you know she doesn't look the, she doesn't look like i don't know maybe it's just a video but she doesn't look the, the most uh mentally st st uh, stabilized woman in the world does she mate but i don't know man i don't know let's let's i guess let's pray for the best and see what happens she's definitely going to get paid regardless um you know we have made worse things as a society we've made worse things um as a global community we have made um worse things popular and successful and if she's you know getting some coins out of this situation which is very unfortunate but also self-inflicted who are we to judge i guess who are we to judge let's move on there let's get rid of that uh, 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 uh. where are we not now okay cool let's move on to some fashion stuff so um, over the weekend, um, Heidi Simon debuted, debuted spring 2021, right? Yes, yeah, spring 2021, um, Celine collection, menswear, um, titled Teen Night Poem. It took place at this amazing castle, cathedral, place-looking thing. Um, models obviously walking all in around the balcony of this place. Um, so far, there's no official lookbooks of it, actually. So I'm going to play the actual video in the background here as we um, continue talking about it. But this is the actual video itself, right? I play in the background, but it just got me thinking in general about the the genius that is Heidi and the fact that he's able to make or Heidi so Heidi Heidi and um, Heidi that he's, that he's able to make um this level of clothing this level of fashion uh pieces and stuff there's so many good things in here Yeah, that's that's the music playing in the background, and you get these amazing shots of this cathedral-looking place. Right, it just looked incredible. I was lowering the sounds; so I don't get um, taken off of YouTube, but it's a very, very well done lookbook, right? I guess everyone's doing it nowadays, especially with um, the virus. You're not really able to have in-person um, shows of any sort of extent, so people are really or fashion companies and brands and houses are really going out of their way to create amazing spectacles to show off their wares and really place their clothing into some level of context because you know you're somewhat limited to runway shows but doing these sort of site specific shows with tying the background into the clothing and the models it really kind of makes stuff pop but some of this stuff is incredible i'm a real big fan of a lot of the stuff that he does i have to be, be completely honest um i like how divisive as he is too he doesn't really uh, you know do interviews for the most part he lets his clothes do the speaking he still has this very singular um 
almost obsessive view of what male fashion should look like and it's very wafy skinny looking boy um super young um hasn't really changed his silhouette in many many years um i'm a big fan of it i love most of it but again i'll do a deep dive of it probably another show because i've got a full lookbook to check through but i thought i'd just quickly mention that one and then next on the list here what do we have Oh yeah, we have Noah, one of my favorite streetwear brands, debuting their spring summer collection here on screen. The entire lookbook. Um, Noah's probably one of the more underrated. I say I would say underrated. I'd say maybe overlooked brands in streetwear at the moment because I guess it's not necessarily quintessentially your you know what you describe as streetwear in terms of hoodie, jeans, sneakers, and the baseball cap. It's a little bit more grown up. You maybe call it post cut and sew if that's even a thing to say i feel disgusted saying that. actually maybe it's not post cut so regardless it's very good menswear right they make very good clothes um they do a very good you know everything from a really good heavy hoodie to a nice pair of shorts because um noah is a really big keen runner and obviously um surfs a lot so he makes great 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 swimming shorts and great just everyday shorts to wear um, again good jackets pretty decent collaborations um, and just very well done t-shirts for the most part so very well-rounded brand all in mm -hmm. but this stuff that they do now you're definitely seeing a, a real big uptick in the levels and what they're basically putting out there you've got this amazing looking is this tweed looking jacket i'm not sure if it's tweed whatever this brown jacket is on the inside it looks beautiful you've got an amazing uh fisherman's jacket Maybe it's waxed in this lovely tone of yellow. Um, you've got the classic, um, what's it, crochet sort of belt that they know it always do. Either a webbed version or something else. It's all about the signature of their brand. They've always got really great belts. A nice pair of pants, top. Obviously, the, the knit or the classic logo doesn't go remiss. Uh, a nice knit there as well as like another knit or sweatshirt underneath a blazer jacket a lot of blazers so maybe they're really upping the production on their tailoring and stuff overall which is a very interesting way um interesting approach to go with especially when you consider most i would imagine most of these streetwear brands or menswear brands are probably most of their target market target most of the target consumers are probably going to be the ages of what 22 to 45 now not a lot of those guys wear suits day to day i'd imagine right so it's a weird thing to do but i guess the whole point of it is that if you if you're noah you're trying to get the kid that's buying your hoodies to also hang around and buy your suits and eventually maybe wear your suits to the first wedding they go to or as as one of their first suits they work they wear when they go into work or something that's i guess the hope you're, you're hoping that your sort of um you know fashion choices and the things that you make in your collections can in 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 turn maybe influence their buying decisions and maybe their taste level and maybe they decide hey you guys make the best cut of a double-breasted blazer and they keep coming back to you instead of going to like you know a borelli or whatever maybe right or some sort of savile row person whatever maybe i guess so um again nice jackets with a zip that's lovely i love that print sort of like a tartan with these lovely pearly white buttons here on the wrist and a nice jumper you got the lady here wearing a great um i forgot what that color is called here where it's sort of like rounds off the edge um maybe it's a pajama pant jack, jack shirt i'm not too sure but it's got the heart motif print all over it you've got another is this houndstooth uh blazer in a very great color that will breasted blazer looks like maybe with the buttons here on either side maybe look really nice great cut great fit overall I love this Kelly Green outfit. It looks like a oh, what what are they what do you call that jumper? I'm not too sure what the name of it is, but it's got little holes in it, and it's got um it's got like a collar you'd find on a long sleeve polo, um with maybe some matching shorts and some great pair of socks. So that looks really good. You got a great pink jumper here, again some nice slacks with a nice uh, nicely pastel print there Oof, that's one of my favorite looks of course that looks really good that's like noah's um interpretation of a classic barber jacket it looks like right it's a barber collaboration it looks like they have barber on one side Noah on the other side with a great beanie um 
some what what do, what do you think those are maybe are they, are they is that a velour or a corduroy pant right maybe on top of some nice uh strap derby boots very nice i love that shirt very our legacy-esque with a little flower motif there on the chest but again very very well done one of my favorite brands man, all around you can't go wrong with it man loads of great pieces that you could easily wear and muck about in your wardrobe again very well done very well put together stores probably gonna be i'll be i guess open sometime this week or maybe next not too sure to be completely honest but it looks very very nice noah nyc spring 2021 again one of the good guys man again a brand that's actually you know run by people that love the game that are in it for the love um have a storied history in the scene overall um don't treat you like cunts when you walk into the store uh have generally affordable prices and they're just you know one of the good guys so definitely go and support them if you can i definitely recommend that one then we have uh, come on let's work here then we have this we have one of my favorite brands season in season and probably one of the most consistent brands on the scene without a shadow of a doubt stussy a legendary streetwear brand maybe one of the first um alongside fucked and um fresh jive and a few others right to really you know put streetwear on the map in a big 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 way um sean stucci of course is no longer involved they've got an entire different team there obviously um pushing things forward and this is maybe one of the rare if not the only instance i could see of a streetwear brand that doesn't necessarily have the main dude involved anymore but it's still doing bits like it to see what to see the difference between what Stussy offers and what Baby Nape offers post Nego is just depressing. Right, it's really depressing to see the stuff that Babe are doing with that brand and how um what what's that flipping holding company that owns it wherever they are they're absolutely killing Babe right the collaborations the products they put out it's just all garbage all garbage like there's not one good thing that's come out of it like babe ended for me when i saw aj tracy wear that puma babe jacket right like aj tracy cool you might make some cool songs here and there but the guy's not a cool guy right you don't want to wear anything aj tracy's wearing and he's wearing this long babe jacket puma thing the puma babe i think it was puma and babe right puma puma collaborating with babe like in a non-ironic way in a way that doesn't involve just like um what the trainers called right that's the only way i could see babe collaborating with puma if they made those flipping trainers, right? They run the MC used to wear back in the day. Uh, or Beastie Boys used to wear back, whatever. That's the only shoe I can ever see. Uh, or the only thing, item of clothing that Babe should ever be involved with when it comes to Puma. But they make some long Arsenal Wenger ass jacket and they get AJ Tracy to model it. I'm just, you know, shoot me in the head, innit? Um, but Stussy have been smashing it quietly. And again, I don't know who's involved. We don't know anything about the people that are doing the design. They're not front and center of any magazine. They're not trying to put their face out there. Maybe people know them behind the scenes, but again, I'm just a consumer. I like to watch this stuff from afar by myself and keep it moving. I don't want to be anyone's friend. So I don't know anyone that does any of this stuff. But from what I can see from looking afar, this stuff is so, so well done. The lookbook, of course, is exquisite. Always really well done. Great models, great looks, um, great styling, great photography. But the clothes themselves individually are just like, a1 so this is a uh, stushi spring 2021 lookbook it says here it's seasonally appropriate wardrobe for everybody who's anybody simple essentials and smart cuts durable fabrics and dizzy in patterns angle yourself towards the sun a trippy floral sherpa zip up a yarn dyed striped pants a billboard sweater an und well, understated tonal hawaiian print jacket sports coat with a monogram lining a quilted linear uh liner vest and a mess tank for layering i love product descriptions i don't know why um stushy spring summer 21 collection is available worldwide on friday february the 5th so it should be available out now if you're um near any locations but just look how great all of this stuff is right jackets this coat look with the all white with the black boots uh this vest is flipping great jumpers nice look at the sweatpants you got these all white air max 95s which i'm sure might be a collab great jacket there they make obviously an amazing short sleeve um printed shirt that everyone's kind of always a fan of look at that look there with a hat and that vest that everyone get eaten up and of course you got the little indication that they're bringing back the uh, signature 
um, sorry, the collaboration they did with, with, with Nike and Rogers from back in the day. I think those two colorways, there was this and also a sandy sort of colorway. So that's great. Maybe it's an indication that a few other Nike um, archive collabs are coming out from back in the day. I think there was something else I saw featured. I forgot who it was, but there's maybe a slew of them. They kind of got a retro, but that's a really cool collaboration. Um, you've got this great jumper there. You've got this amazing jacket, maybe the best in the actual, all of it, all in general, that I'd wear in a heartbeat. That looks a little bit like a tech jacket with some great pockets in the front, angled pocket here on the arm, and then a great little Stussy logo here on the side. Great sweatpants. My favorite type of sweatpants without the cuff in the bottom. Are they sweatpants or are they trousers? They might be trousers, actually. I'll take that back. They're trousers. But regardless, I'm still a fan of that. Um, nice anorak here. Or last half zip, you'd say, right? Um, again, great vest. Nice bottoms. I'm not too sure about those cycling type trainers, though. But just overall, just easily, easily, really, really well done clothing. You could easily wear it. Again, it's suiting. Same with Noah, right? There's obviously a concerted effort to get kids to wear suits nowadays. We're just to see how that goes on and evolves. Hopefully, if the pricing is good and it's good options, and that will make more sense. But again, what is good? What is good pricing with a suit? I have no idea. The last suit I bought was from flipping Zara, right? And it was what, hundred fifty quid for for both pieces, including the shirt. I think I don't know what's a good price for like a suit from a streetwear brand or from a um a menswear brand that isn't fashion well what is it 300 pounds um 400 like what would be the actual price um because i'm sure if you go to like a Savile row tailor you're gonna have to pay thousands plus right so you don't really have many options it's either you go for like a high street one in terms of top shop and all those kind of places r.i.p or whatever it may be or you go to um one of the other high street suit people like moss bros and whatever it may be called right and you don't really want to wear those suits right because they're like they're the sort of suits you'd wear if you're gonna go if you're gonna you know work in an office somewhere um but yeah interesting to see what, what they're gonna do with suiting um again great oh they're the other colorway of the rachis that are due to come out too got the sweatpants again a nice jumper there you've got this nice fleece zip up that looks flipping cozy as fuck i love the pockets too the pockets slightly angled i'm a big fan of slightly angled pockets i got me I, I don't like the you know these these are the same these sort of like a slightly angled zip pocket it's a bit annoying with the zip itself your skin always scratches up against it but i like that it's angled i hate the the pockets that just basically slits on the side that you put in just makes the jacket scrunch up a bit weird but i think this drops really nice with the sort of digi print camo pants or tree bark camo pants sorry um again just so so well done man that's a very good um Notting Hill carnival vest to wear in it make sure it could it could be worn in the hot in the heat and in the summer but that is so good all of it's great all of it's fucking fantastic i'd wait oh come on look how good this looks that jacket is so hard that outfit is so hard oh yeah yeah it's all so good I want everything, but yeah, definitely check out Stushy Spring 2021 collection. Easy one of my favorites out there. They make some really good stuff. Like, look at that. Look at that. That's that's ready for church, bruv, isn't it? Hallelujah, isn't it? Hallelujah, amen. And of course, you know, just throwing a girl there just to kind of show you what else they're just to show you what else. Just show you they're not only, you know, slaying it for the men, they're also kind of picking stuff up for the women. Like, look at that, mate. Look at that. Look at all of this. All so good so bloody good it's all really oh, that that look is great isn't it what is that skirt material is that like a towel pile what is that very nice got these shorts as well i like nice shirt oh it looks so cool oh yeah it's the same material isn't it? whatever that material that is that's really nice oh it all looks so great man but yeah definitely check it out stussy spring summer 2021 one of my favorite brands out there doing big things without even having to try what else do we have here skip over that skip over that what else do we have here if it's eight or is that not it cool. that might not be it must have more stuff here to talk about yeah cool okay i guess that might be it then not much news else to go on again i think 
yeah apologies for that not much else to go on with news wise but you know we do the most that we can with the time that we have available um as per usual if it's your first time checking out the show please make sure you smash that like button hit subscribe and leave a comment down below that would be greatly greatly appreciated and of course if it's your first time viewing with the podcast side, please leave me a five star review share it with your friends and all that good stuff and i'll see you guys again on the other side in it um new shows coming when another show coming again tomorrow yeah for sure so don't delay don't rest there of course join the patreon patreon.com for just agostino that's patreon.com for just a g o s t i n h o um join on there for as little as one dollar per month to get access to all my bonus content i'll be published on the old patreon there's actually um what else is here oh there's this cool little thing in it right it's just mix mag this says a new book hush documents berlin clubs and the time of coronavirus so they went around <clears throat> these photographers to some great um berlin establishments and nightclubs and they basically took pictures of it you know empty during um this crazy virus that we're living in and some of the pictures are pretty bleak but also optimistically inviting as to what we have to look forward to once this stuff is over because it can be difficult to have some level of optimism as to what may lie in the future because of you know the terrible times we're living in at the moment but there's also this thing in the back of my head which i'm sort of holding on to that there are all these crazy amazing spaces that are just barren no one's using them no one's throwing any secret special parties in them it's, there's nothing going on there's no nothing because i think in the beginning i was like that. i think last year i think I'm, people might have been like that maybe i'm just on my own but i would admit it there was a part of me that was like oh, i bet you there's all these other things happening that i'm not being invited to that i'm just not cool enough to know about but it's like no, no no there was nothing really going on there were the odd people here and there throwing house parties but for the most part there was nothing large scale that you or i really missed out on in the party scene most of the things that were happening were just happening because they were happening people were just doing them as spur the moment or whatever they may be um but the things that you'd actually want to go to in an actual nightclub which was in my opinion which is why i think even this whole ordeal as bad as it's been hasn't it been great because it's very much re-emphasized the importance of nightclubs hasn't it don't you think so um if ever there was any sort of confusion or any sort of underestimating of the power and the role that clubs play in nightlife and in just um city culture um this time has definitely proved how vital they are to fostering maintaining providing a space for um people who kind of operate on the fringes right for the most part people that like to hang around in bars and clubs and stuff are not people that like to maybe you know go to other places right they prefer to go to these sort of things and they need that space and without those spaces it kind of makes life not worth living and we've basically seen you know various people within the nightlife basically echo the same things because they're showing their actions people are so desperate to play that they're willing to travel on the other side of the earth to go and play right in third world developing countries to go play somewhere just because they're so desperate to you know um uh what's that word called they're so desperate to relive those experiences once again and again as bleak as these pictures are as empty as they may be in my opinion they are a beacon of hope as per this light here right at the top of this door right that is a beacon of hope it's like telling you hey there is light in the tunnel we are going to be able to get through this if we just hang on and hold on look at what we have to walk back into like look at some of these places like god almighty some of the best clubs in berlin again i think you could do the same thing in london you could do the same thing in in new york la most places around the world i'm sure various clubs would look like this right at this present time but just look how inviting and how ready they look for just human bodies to be throbbing and swaying side to side in these places look they're just ready to go oh so so awesome man i honestly cannot wait like who, who who is looking for, who who else is not looking forward to having their coat taken by a, a cloakroom clerk and putting on one of these hangers and you know get given a little number back or something or a stamp on your wrist like who isn't looking forward to that like jesus christ look at this it all looks so appealing and so inviting oh and the good thing as well i think about all this i think that might be the same that might be the same heads at the bottom here i recognize um the good thing about the, the funny thing about all these pictures is that number one it's hard to recognize them all when it's daytime especially because usually you're used to going to place at night um number two it's also um very much so um 
I think a lot of people when they do step back into clubs will be very how would you call it everyone's going to feel everyone I imagine is going to feel a sense of gratitude right you're not going to want to take these places for granted anymore because part of everyone's thinking was there's a lot there's gonna be a lot of ptsd i think in the first few weeks and months of when we're all back outdoors you're gonna always feel as if like at a moment's notice your freedom could be taken away from you so people are gonna probably go super super hard in the beginning and then you know probably wear themselves thin and then once they realize that we're not gonna go back ever again to how it was prior in terms of being locked down they're gonna finally settle down but you're just not gonna take it for granted anymore and i think you shouldn't um, these places, the people in them, the people associated with them are very much a part of your life as as your family member is. Mm -hmm. And you need to really cherish these moments because, you know, you honestly don't know when it's going to be gone and how long it has been gone for and how and how much you will miss it. Because again, spare a thought, forget us, right? As punters, as customers, as clientele, as artists, whatever. Just imagine how it must be feel like for the people that actually work there like the mat the big hole because most of the people i don't know about you but in london most of the people that work in nightlife or work in clubs and bars and stuff they go to other bars too right they they jump around from bar to bar to bar it's like a thing it's a lifestyle it's a it's your identity it's just the thing that you do it's very it's very unlikely you're gonna go work a normal office job somewhere because this is the thing that you found so if that's the case imagine the hole that's being left in their hearts from not being able to do such a thing or to go to such a place or to be around such people. It must be such a hard experience, such a hard time to be, you know, going through at the moment mm -hmm. if you're a bar back, a bartender, a crew clerk, a security guard, a door picker, bathroom attendant, uh, you know, a lighting technician, sound engineer, whatever, it's associated with a nightclub, you must be like oh it must be so difficult for those guys man i really spare a fall for them because it's all well and good us missing the dance floor but those people that actually work in that industry who live and breathe it and that's their entire lives and they love being around these crazy people that are associated with bars and nightclubs right from the night managers to the door holders the key holders the delivery driver like oh it must be so odd but again look what we have to go back to man all these amazing spaces just op open and inviting us in for a dance or two so this is courtesy of a book called berlin club culture in time of silence is due out when it says here it's due out on march the first it says right march the first is due out uh definitely check it out i'll definitely make sure i'll get a book a copy myself and obviously do a review on the channel because some of these pictures look flipping incredible what's the club's features here i think it's trezor and somewhere else right trezor watergate uh weekend ohm same heads paloma Kit Kat, and gretchen I'm going to say what I remember here. The pool is definitely Kit Kat, even though I haven't been. I stepped in there myself, actually. Where's the pool? Pool's here. There we go. That's Kit Kat for sure. Uh, This one, I'm not too sure. This one, I'm not too sure either. That's Watergate. Um, That might be Trezor. And that is obviously Gretchen with a G, but I'm not sure about the rest of them. But yeah, some great pictures. Of course, it's the same heads because I'm just used to all the kitsch um, pieces of uh, display, furniture, interior design stuff they got in there, innit? Um, but yeah, man. Soon we'll be back on the dance floor, guys. Soon. Anyway, is there anything else I missed off before I carry on or move on to something else? Let me double check here. Let's make sure I haven't missed anything. Bear with me. Bish bush bush. Oh, yeah, I saw Six Nine was back in there. He's he's making the rounds, putting videos up of him in the studio and shit. But again, it's not the same in it. The energy is kind of dissipated, unfortunately. No one really gives a shit too much about what's actually going on. Um, what else? Uh, nothing else is happening. Look, oh, Kodak Black is out. He's looking nice and healthy. Um what else is happening that's about it. yeah let's end it there man let's end it there no more else to talk about i'll come back again on the other side anyway for now that's been the on single show episode number 431 thanks again for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company and i'll see you guys again very very soon peace